Allow me to share a personal note. You know, every week I come and get ready to do money talks, but I battle a couple of issues. The first is that I have trouble thinking of subjects that people care about. I mean, don't get me wrong, I have no trouble coming up with subjects that will impact people's lives directly. Issues like the value of the Canadian dollar, the impact of an aging population on health care, the increasing job losses in some industries due to technology, I mean, the coming pension crisis, I mean, there's so many more subjects. But the challenge is that most people don't seem to care about them. I mean, even if it hits them square in the face, I mean, you know, one of our big recommendations, maybe our biggest recommendation on Money Talks, and it's been since October 2012, even earlier, was to put a significant percentage of your savings and investment in U.S. dollars, as we correctly predicted, the fall in the loonie and the impact on your buying power. But still, I don't get the impression that too many people care. My goal, you see, is to protect you from the fallout in a period I see of the most dramatic historical change in generations, which is, I think, we've chronicled very accurately here. But I don't get the impression that many people care which is why I've decided that that J.P. Morgan quote, regular listeners will be familiar with it, should be the overriding theme of this show. He said, you can ignore economics and finance. The scary part is they won't ignore you. Every single aspect of our standard of living, our homes, our, our, our kids' future, our health care, travel, vacations, entertainment, all come back to economics and finance. But still, a lot more people seem to care more about Kim Kardashian, the Maple Leafs or Oilers, Prime Minister Trudeau's latest photo bomb, the political drama of the day, than economics and finance. Which brings me to my second major challenge. I'm amazed at how many people don't seem to care about facts or research when it comes to major policy discussions. And I see it all the time. You know, I can't even think of a time when someone sent me an angry email that actually presented alternative research to support their point of view. They simply said that I'm an idiot because uh, I don't share their opinion. I don't even know what I actually how to have a conversation with people who don't value research and evidence when we're talking about policy. And sadly, that includes a huge majority of our politicians and the most prominent special interest groups on economic subjects. I mentioned in my business comment yesterday how Ontario Premier Kathleen Wynne's decision to raise minimum wage to $15 within two years in Ontario actually ignored the advice of her own hand-picked experts that they put him on the free um, uh, minimum wage commission panel. Economists are now predicting the job losses, which, of course, the vast majority of research and her own commission predicted. But, I mean, where do you get with that? I mean, so many examples. Look at Donald Trump and the Canadian left's opposition to free trade in general, and NAFTA in particular. I mean, it goes against an avalanche of research and facts that show that all three countries benefit from free trade. I mean, if NAFTA was cancelled, every one of us would see a significant drop in our standard of living. But it doesn't bother opponents a bit. How about this? We get told by politicians that job creation and economic growth is their top priority. What, a few minutes just before they raise taxes on business, including payroll taxes, which discourages capital investment and hiring? Then they add to the regulatory burden, create restrictive labor laws. Just did that in uh, Alberta with the NDP, which encourages capital investment to go elsewhere. A big concern in Vancouver and Toronto is affordable housing, yet governments refuse to acknowledge all the evidence that zoning bylaws, development fees, taxes on purchases, new mortgage insurance rules are all principal culprits in hurting affordability. As I said, so many examples. I mean, is it any wonder that the problems uh, persist? Actually getting worse in many instances. I mean, we get opportunities are lost, tax dollars are wasted, people get hurt. Usually the most vulnerable pay the price when policy is based on ideology, emotion, rather than evidence. Yet, so many people seem far more enamored with their own opinions than evidence. They see no value in research or historical evidence or facts. And that guarantees problems.